welcome to the Industry Angel Podcast. We hear from the best business minds across the globe, entrepreneurs, social influencers, marketing mavens, and sales rock stars. We've got them all. Here comes your weekly dose of inspiration with your host, Ian Farah. Welcome to episode 97 of the Industry Angel. No guest this week. I was thinking about having a week off, but then I missed you guys. I had to pick up the mic and share something with you, which I'll do shortly. So remember, industryangel.com, you can get your tickets to the live event on oh, let's have a think, August 14th. Come on, Ian. August 14th at the Custom House, South Shields. We'll be having fun and interviewing Ray Spencer MBE. So come along. I'd love to see you there. So what am I doing with you today? Well, yes, I missed you. But actually, I wanted to talk about something I saw this week. And I want to talk about short-termism, making a quick book, and integrity. Because I was I come across a, a business this week and I didn't really want to work with them. Because of that, I didn't feel like the business had integrity. I felt it was very short term, making a quick book, and I didn't want to kind of put my name to that. And when I left, I sort of reflected on that, and I thought, yeah, that, that totally is the right thing to do. If it doesn't feel right, then it isn't right, you know? Go with your gut. Your gut's very rarely wrong. And I would like to tell you about a story that my dad told me because I think I've shared this with you before and I know I've wrote it in blog articles, but my dad was um, a plater in the shipyards here in the Northeast. So, you know, in an environment of of uh, strong blokes, banter, winding each other up, you know, really, really hard, kind of good graft, very tired when he came home, you know, long hours, shift works, that kind of thing. And my dad taught me a lot about business. And you might think, well, how's that? He's never kind of run a business or he wasn't in business. Because for me, business is about values. It's about just doing the right thing, you know. And my dad's got, he's a gentleman, he has integrity, he has honor. And he said to me, look, in business, son, you've got to be able to look at yourself in the mirror. And that really stuck with me. It really taught me a lot because I'm sure you've met them. I'm sure you've seen people who've, I don't know, took credit for a bit of your work. Maybe they've stood on people to get that promotion. It's short-termism for me. What, What do you think those people, how do you think those people are spoken about behind their backs, you know? If you've had to think now what people would say about you when you aren't around, what do you think they would say? Hopefully they'd say nice things, eh? And that's and surely that's what you want as a person. But maybe there's people out there who don't care about that and maybe they, they want to make a quick book. But for me, that that's not really my style. And when I walked away from this kind of deal this week, I just thought, am I being too soft to this? And then I thought, no, you're not. You know, stick with what you believe in. So I just wanted to speak to you about that because as a business... And, and as and as you maybe as a solopreneur or a micro business, whatever you are, you must have beliefs and you must have some values. And I want you to think about them. I want you to actually write them down because yes, you probably got them inside and yes, you probably live your life with those, but not actually thinking about them. You probably don't consciously do this. So I want you to take a pen and I want you to think, what is your business built on? Is it built on honesty, loyalty, dependability, reliability, transparency, efficiency, whatever it is, you know, what are your values? And why should you do this? Well, because we don't sell to businesses. We don't supply to businesses. We supply to people. It isn't business to business or business to consumer. It's human to human, H to H, P to P, person to person, whatever you want to call it. It's the real people that we deal with. And I want to see you. I I want to deal with you. I want to know who you are. I don't want to have this faceless logo. I want to know the real you, the man behind the mask, the wizard behind the curtain, whatever you want to call it. It's cliche, I know, and I've said it loads of times on this podcast about being authentic and real and human. But what we need to do now in this age is be relatable. 
and this is what I'm trying to do in my life. And it's not a it's not a deliberate thing. I'm not trying to trick anybody and being salesy. I'm just being relatable. I'm just being mean. If I relate with you, then great, because you've clicked subscribe to this podcast and you listen to me and I enjoy, I enjoy you doing that and appreciate it. Thanks. But my clients relate to me and I relate to them and that's why we work together. And that's really what it feels like to me, a, a relationship. I don't feel like we're doing transactional business together. We're actually, we want to work together. And I was with a client this week, actually, and she's amazing, lovely, lovely lady, and they're doing some excellent stuff. And I'm so envious, actually, because the service they offer is just so fun. And I was like, right, we need to get some video done here. You need to be on camera and introduce what you're doing. She was like, no, 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 it's not for me. And I understand that. I I know people might be nervous about it, but it's relatable though. She, I just want her on camera because you would love her straight away and you'd actually start to want to work with her because of the fact that she's great and she's just such a lovely lady. Not for the fact that they were, I don't know, established in 1986 and have an award for this, that and the other. That's really of no interest to be honest. Like, do you care about that stuff? I don't really care. So... Think about doing some content and I know maybe you might not be the boss, okay, and maybe your boss might want to do that. Could you convince them somehow? Could you get them on camera, interview them, pinch their social media handles maybe and have a bit of fun with it? Because we need to do this. We really need to show who we are as business people and leaders and influencers essentially. And what's the alternative anyway? Pushing a load of crappy marketing out? Or you could push something really cool out and fun and show the real you rather than buy my stuff. Look how great I am. I just wrote this blog article talking about how amazing you know we are. Boring, totally boring. How to turn people off or what. So think about maybe recording some video, recording some great bit of content. I mean, it is hard. I, I do this podcast, okay, and when I first started, you might get some haters. You might get people saying, who does she think she is? Who does he think he is? I had that, maybe 0.1%. But actually, look at look at us now. We're on episode 100. We're doing some great things with, with the live shows. We're having so much fun with it. And, you know, them first few episodes where somebody said, what do you think he's doing? You know, that doesn't even bother me now. It's just that they're, they're, they're nothing to me. And... Why, why should people actually have an opinion on, on you? Is it because they're insecure about what they're not doing, you know? And thinking about the competition and thinking about looking over your shoulder, you know the worst piece of competition for us is just doing nothing. Status quo, doing the usual stuff, that's the worst piece of competition, not anybody else. So sod all them, let's not worry about them, let's just crack on and do something amazing. Let's do some killer content. And I want you to tag me in it, show me it. I really want to see the real you. Hopefully you've got passion. Hopefully you started this business that you're in or you you began this career or you joined this company because it was good. It was something you wanted to do. You had a drive to do it. I want to see that. I really want to see that drive. We all do. You can't not watch a video and feel moved and feel emotional and relate to it if it's full of passion. You just you just can. Like, for you salespeople out there, have you ever tried to sell something you don't believe in? It just fails, doesn't it? It's so hard to do it. You don't want to do it. You don't feel like selling it. When you're talking to the client, you're actually trying to convince them and you're actually trying to convince yourself sometimes as well. So that comes across. Think about it that way. That passion just so comes across if you're true, if you're honest. And these are some of the values that I want you to think about and I want you to share. You don't just trust a brand either. You trust the people behind it and think about your product or service. If it's without meaning, then it's just a product, just a commodity. But if it actually does have meaning, it becomes a brand and the brand is the people behind it. It's you guys. That's why we work together. I think one of the worst mistakes in marketing as well is to think that everyone's like you and they just aren't. You know, if you think uh, no one will resonate with this bit of content or nobody wants to hear this story about me or, or it's boring, we should be doing X, Y, and Z. Well, maybe you're wrong. 
why why not try it? Why not test it? And you've probably been doing X, Y, and Z for the last 10 years and getting the same results year on year. So let's try and do A, B, C. Let's see what happens after you do it. And you know, if nothing happens, what's the worst that could happen? Probably nothing. And if you've lost any clients because you've done something, then they weren't a fit for you. And that's just natural and they've done you a favor. (laughs) So think about your digital reputation. What does that mean to you? What does your digital reputation look like right now? Are you doing much out there? Are you putting yourself out there? So if you, if you aren't, you probably haven't really got much of a digital reputation. You know, we've often spoke about people working with you because they know, like, and trust you. But there's nothing for them to see. There's nothing for them to find. Where are they going to get the trust from? How are they going to like you? Yes, I get that you might do that over face-to-face, but... The digital reputation is so powerful now. What's the first thing you do when you're going to meet with somebody? You probably jump on LinkedIn and see who they are. You might stalk them on Facebook or Google them. Online is where you make that first impression now. There's so many ways to make money, okay? But what I'm trying to say today is just don't be creepy about it. Let's be social about it. Social media, social first, media second. Be social, be trustworthy, Get those values out because relatability is where it's at. If you can't relate to somebody, then why should you buy their stuff? So rather than transact with somebody, let's interact with somebody, okay? So thanks for listening to my waffles today. I did really miss you guys and have a great summer. I know some of you might be going on your holidays, vacations. And if you listen to this on the beach, I am so jealous right now. If you are, please relax. Have a beer for me. Soak up that sun and we'll see you next time. I'm Ian Farrah. This is the Industry Angel. Thanks for listening.